Oh my God, it's digital charcuterie. Oh my God, it's Zelda. Welcome aboard everybody to this very special episode of Digital Sugar. I, I feel like the WB announcer. Welcome to a very special episode <laughs> tonight on Dawson's Creek. Um, I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I am joined by Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Andrew. Thanks for having me on here. No problem. Thanks for coming by because uh, James does not play video games that are longer than 45 minutes. So I needed <laughs> to talk about Zelda with somebody. Thank you for prying yourself away from the game long enough to be able to do this because I had a hard time doing that. I literally, I, I was watching the clock while I was playing earlier and I'm like, okay, I can go up to this point and then I got stuff to do and then I have to record with Steve. So if I stop right here and what I was doing, I won't say because it's kind of spoiler, but what I was doing ended at the perfect time for that. It's like uh -huh. everything I was doing culminated in this one final, hooray, you did a thing and now you can go off and explore again. And I'm like, perfect. There's there's the perfect place to shut off the switch oh, for the nice, time being. Nice. <laughs> so we're gonna be careful with what we spoil here for you, the viewer, and also for each other, because Tears of the Kingdom, like Breath of the Wild, is a very play it your own way at your own pace kind of game. So just because I have seen something in the game doesn't mean Steve has seen it. And just because he's seen it doesn't mean I have. In fact, if you look in the background, Steve's son is playing the game right now. So Steve's son is finding stuff that we haven't even found yet. So we shouldn't even be looking at that screen. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Don't look here. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, and it's amazing because so my my two sons, they're eight and ten years old. They're both playing the game through as well. So I'll play it for a couple hours myself and got to stop, let them play. And then as they're playing, I'm seeing, oh, that's how they did that. I didn't do it that way. I did it the complete opposite way of doing it. And it's really funny. Like I'm seeing three different you know viewpoints on how to play the same level in the same game, and it's refreshing it, it, it's really interesting and I, i'm learning a lot i feel like if you were to say that to the people at nintendo they would like weep tears of joy because i feel like that's exactly what they wanted to hear when yeah. they were designing this and uh that brings up something that i have never that, that i haven't you know i have no um frame of reference for because i'm just playing on my own here but save files you can have three or more save files on the game is that how it works I think so. We're doing it because we got different profiles, so each one of us has a different profile. Oh, that's right. I forgot the switch does that. See, that's what happens when you're a loner. You don't you don't learn these features. <laughs> yeah, no. I I've only been playing the one save file inside my game. Now, if they release um, expanded content later on, like a downloadable content, then we'll have to start doing that. But for now, right. for now, we can share it between the three users. Perfect. Uh, so, I think right off the bat, the first thing that we should bring up here because this is our first impressions is if we had any hope slash expectations slash um fears before this game came out steve and I, I mean i'll throw the question to you but my only fear that i had was or not even a fear but my only like concern was okay we know we're getting physically pretty much 99 percent the same high rule as breath of the wild so my concern was, if this game took six years to make, what is that six years giving us that's different? Where is that uh, development money going? I think there was a lot of fear with a lot of people just that, you know, is it just more expanded content, downloadable content that's thrown into a new game? You know, here's Zelda Breath of the Wild with a brand new bow. You know, yeah. <laughs> have at it. But, I, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but I... I I'm impressed with the changes that they've made to it. It does feel like a whole new game. Um, again, not getting too much into spoilers or anything, but yeah, when I hit, literally hit the ground running and, and uh, when I landed in Hyrule, I don't recognize a lot of the things. You know, I've, I've gone, okay, I know I want to go to Hatino Village. I know I want to go to the Shrine of Resurrection or Temple of Time. It took me a while to find my way there, especially before you had a, a map to, 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 to go off. And you're just trying to base off of landmarks, but so much has changed that it's it's there, but it, it, it's not. It took me a long time to recognize and find my way um, just from memory. And that's great. It makes it feel like a whole new whole new game. And it's not just a new skin. There are new things, new caves, new enemies, new new dun like well, dungeons, but you know, new content that makes it feel fresh. Yes. And somehow they they made it feel like much more than just a new coat of paint, even though it's pretty much the same high rule. There's so much, like you're saying, that's been thrown in there that 
it's a it's more than a full game's worth of new stuff that has been tossed on there. Like it is a maximalist game in every sense of the word. And I think one of the key things that they did that was really smart was just to help create the sense of disorientation and newness and unfamiliarity. Because I had the same feeling as you, Steve. I tried to find the Temple of Time and I got lost. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I should know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that happened to us is the first game starts you off in a certain spot and then your whole objective is to eventually get strong enough to get close to Hyrule Castle. Because Hyrule Castle is, there's a lot of bad stuff going down there in part one. And the closer you get to it, the more dangerous it gets. So that one was all about get to the center of the map uh, once you're strong enough. Whereas mm -hmm. Tears of the Kingdom, minor spoilers here, if you've like not played yet at all, you start off at the castle, or at least right beside it. You get thrown uh, right into it, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's the reverse effect. It's like now the farther you go from the center, the harder things become. So essentially it disorients you by bizarro swapping what was ingrained in our nature for 200 hours of playing that first game, which is if I go close to that center of the map, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you have to unlearn what you've learned. I mean, do you remember waking up in Breath of the Wild, waking up in the Shrine of Resurrection, Link has no idea what's going on and you're, 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 you're finally, you're running out that cave. And when you finally get out and the whole kingdom of Hyrule is right there, you're looking at the castle, had that grand reveal, like, okay, here's where this game is going to take you. Tears of the Kingdom didn't quite have that moment, you know? And I, I got jumping ahead here, but I tried to recreate it myself by finding the Shrine of Re Resurrection. And I'm like, okay, I got to do that reveal. And it just mm. wasn't quite the same. Um, but, but that's all right. Um, yes, yeah, it, it, you, you really start the game right where you expect to. I mean, if you watch the trailer that came out, you know, four, three or four years ago, whatever it was, <laughs> the first trailer... Uh, and even the second trailer, you pretty much, I, I think you have a good idea where the game starts you off, but that's it. Like, you know, when we saw that trailer, we were wondering how much did they actually just show us? And it was nothing. It was a fraction, a minuscule little percentage of what the main story is, but it, it still ties in together. Like when I was watching the, the cinematic scenes, I was like, okay, that's where we are. Um, that I remember that. Okay. I saw that. Oh, there's the hand. Like I was waiting for it. Like I knew, okay, we're going to bump into a, you know, <laughs> the corpse of Ganon lying somewhere underneath the castle because mm -hmm. that's been in the trailer for how long, right? That cannot be a spoiler for anybody, but it starts you off right at that point. I mean, how many other games start you? All right, here's, here's Ganon. Here's the big bad go, <laughs> you know, and that's where the story just takes off. Right. Yeah. It literally fades from black and you are there. Mm -hmm. You are there and you're, you're living that. And then everything snowballs. Uh, did you have any, Fears, hopes, expectations going into this game for the 15 years that we spent waiting for it since they announced it. <laughs> it feels like it, right? Um, honestly, no, but that's because I'm such a Zelda mark. I'm just excited to get to get new uh, a new game. Um, I, I I I wasn't worried about much much at all. Mm -hmm. I I I figured if they're taking this long, remember the game was supposed to release. I want to say a year ago. I'm not sure how long ago, but it was supposed to release before. I've been, and Nintendo came out and announced said we need more time. We're pushing it back. Well, that didn't have me worried. There's a lot of video games out there, but when you hear that, you're thinking, oh, red flag, red flag. For mm -hmm. me, I'm like, no, I, I believe them when they say, we want to make this right. We just need that extra time. You know, please give it to us. And bravo, <laughs> like, like, like time well spent. It's... Oh, yeah, it shows. I, mean, I think Shigeru Miyamoto is the one who said, like, don't be afraid of delayed games because a delayed game is only delayed once, but a bad game is bad forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Yeah, so. Uh, and we don't have to worry about anything like that happening here because it sounds like from what you've played, uh, you're having a good time, question mark? I'm loving it. I mean, I I was all about exploration. <laughs> I was all about, and like this, I mean, there, again, it's the same high roll map that we knew, but we there's also the sky level. So now you've added a whole new layer, literally onto the map, a uh, whole new ways to explore. And, even just the puzzles and challenges of, okay, I can see that island over there. How the heck do I get over there? And I'm having a hard time with that because I'm like, I want to go over there, but I don't have the ability to yet. I mean, I'm sure eventually I will. I don't know how, don't know when, but I will get to that island. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, again, a little bit of a spoiler here, but once you start, basically, you start up in the sky levels, and then once you hit high roll, you hit high roll running. 
And, you know, we, we, were, we were both talking about how you quickly learn there's a whole other level to the game, a whole other dimension that we did not know about prior to the release. Um, you start out with a little side quest that says, hey, you got to go underground. You got to go find explore this cave. So you just think, okay, it's a little side quest. That's, that's nothing. But once you get down there, a whole other world. You realize this is not just a little confined uh, um, cave. This is an elaborate cave system that covers the whole span of Hyrule. There's a whole other game down there. And that's where I have been getting lost playing this game. Or I'm just exploring the underground because I've got no expectations of it. I'm just fire a light arrow. All right, let's see where the light takes us. It's great. Look how big this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look how big. It's I mean, he's exploring. My, my son here is exploring the map here. He hasn't unlocked the, the map content, but he's just scrolling around and it just keeps going and going and going. So like I said, uh, Breath of the Wild was always known for how big that high roll map was. But it's so big map, but now you got an upstairs and now you got a downstairs as well. It's three mm -hmm. levels of game. And <laughs> I, I wasn't ready for that. It was a very pleasant surprise. Same here. That was one thing I had no idea about going into it. And then I figured, well, I'll, sure, I'll jump down the scary hole because the lady in the town told me to. What could happen? <laughs> and I think that the the depths of Hyrule is the most frightened I have ever been playing a Zelda title. Um, the sense of dread that you get down there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if people who have claustrophobia in real life find that hard to play because it is oppressive darkness like you have never seen and there is an easy way to you know work your way through that but you are constantly going to face challenges that keep it fresh and keep it exciting and keep it scary and uh the the depths were just a beautiful addition and i can't wait to find out what else is down there because you just know there's stuff lurking down there waiting to be found. Absolutely. What bad guy is waiting for me down there? <laughs> <laughs> I can't what even imagine. What will we uncover? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's exciting. And, you know, like some people, uh, I'm sure, might like a more linear gameplay. So they might go down there, and they might not ever climb out till they get the whole map and finish it. And, mm -hmm. you know, same thing up on Hyrule. They might, okay, I'm just staying on the main level here, and I'll explore as much as I can, get all the maps, then I'll piece together. Then I'll start doing the upstairs, and I'll start doing the downstairs. For me, I'm just going, you know, I'm like, oh, there's a dog over there with a puffy tail. Let's go follow him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like up, down, all over the place. <laughs> the Homer Simpson puffy dog. Yeah. <laughs> what the, a lot of people were expecting there to be more advanced swimming in, in mm -hmm. this and like exploring underwater. And maybe it is, but so far I, ha I haven't seen that yet. To me, kind of swimming is the same, you know, if you, you might swim past the fish, then you can grab it and that kind of thing. But all of an ad, there's no, again, so far, I mean, this, this might not age well in a few weeks, but uh, so far I, have, I, I haven't seen anything underwater, have you? No, and the water thing is actually, uh, I'm curious about, because obviously you start off the game with nothing, like you do with every Zelda game. You start off with three hearts and not really, you know, a, a stick to your name and that's about it. So those all important Zora clothes that you had from Breath of the Wild are no longer there. So you're not gonna be swimming like Michael Phelps anymore. And to top it all off, you know, you have totally different rune powers and none of them are cryonis. So crossing large bodies of water becomes a much bigger challenge in this game than it used to be. Absolutely. Uh, and I've come across something and I feel like you may have too. I'm not gonna say where it is, but I came across a place and a certain entity in this place told me to help them by searching underneath water somewhere else. Um, and I said, okay, I can't do that yet. So I'm assuming I will eventually be able to. Yep. Uh, possibly. <laughs> uh, or uh, yeah, I don't want to get into this too much spoiler yeah. with that one, but <laughs> I, right away, I'm thinking okay, just four different ways that could play out right away. Uh -huh. so, yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting. Uh, do we want to talk about the abilities? Cause there's a yeah. whole new set of abilities in this game. Um, and a distinct lack of the abilities that were in the other game that we're so used to. Yes. Um, you know, uh, we don't have, well, I forget the name of it, but the bombs. I love the pulling up a yeah. bomb whenever you want. I love that. That was a great ability. Um, even like, I guess it's not quite an ability, but I miss Rivali scale. 
Ooh, I know yeah. that there are other abilities in this that can you know counter it, but it's not quite the same. Um, even just magnesis, like like you said, you know, we're we're missing them. But the trade off is you have a whole new set of abilities, and some are very similar, you know, but not 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 quite the same. So just what, what's your take? What are, what are you thinking about the new abilities? You're right. I do miss Revolving Dale a lot. Like that is <laughs> that was the lifesaver of Breath of the Wild for me. Um, I was very vertically challenged a lot of times. Um, the the new abilities they took some getting used to, but thankfully the tutorial is a nice big long tutorial, so it mm -hmm. really gets you used to them. Um, the bombs were the biggest missing piece for me because I was like, oh my god, having unlimited bombs was such a like a a good thing for me as Link. Like I could just go throw bombs at every rock I saw and get all kinds of stuff to sell and make money. All of a sudden now, if you want to break rocks, it's, you know, you got to do it a different way I and it's the not old as easy. Way. <laughs> yeah, you got to get some mining done. Uh, and it's not, uh, it's not like super difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but it just has a few more steps to it and you have to keep on top of it. Um, and it involves keeping things in your inventory that, are useful for breaking rocks. And if you don't have one and you see like a nice big rock that looks like it's got diamonds in it, you're out of luck. Uh, mm -hmm. Luckily, the game is very generous with the ingredients you can use to get this work done. Uh, but I still do miss hurling a bomb now and then. Uh, yeah. And the, the other new abilities have proven to be so much fun. Uh, and I have found the, the final one that I feel like I found it earlier than I was supposed to, but I stumbled upon it. Uh, in fact, if, you're, if your son, I saw your son bring up the wheel of, of abilities and I saw he didn't have it there. Yeah, um, can, you, can you bring up the menu? <laughs> bring, bring up the abilities. Let's bring see. Up the, okay, so we have, so should we go over them? I mean, I yes, yeah, let's go over it. I mean, so the first one you start out with is Ultra Hand, which we all know mm. about from watching the trailers. Ultra Hand is basically like Magnesis, but it doesn't have to be metal objects. You can pick up other objects and whatnot. Um, oh, bring it back up. And then you have Ultra Hand. Now, Ultra Hand, again, we know about from the, from the trailers. You Ultra Hand is what? You said Ultra Hand first. Did I say Ultra Hand first? Oh, I'm sorry, Internet. <laughs> but uh, Fuse, what I'm trying fuse. to say is Fuse. Fuse is what combines your weapons. That's what we're talking about ingredients. So when we say... The game gives you an ample supply of ingredients that you kind of got to go figure things out yourself. Fuse combines objects. Yeah. Um, so you can combine a sword with a rock. Now you have a rock sword. But that rock sword is like, a lot like a hammer. So that's how you can hit your mind, you know, hit, hit those gems and hit those mines and hit the stones. And the, like you said, the game is very generous with the placement of those. You know, I, I, I've never been without a weapon at this point. Um, but some things I've been having fun. Have you have you explored the fuse and kind of exploring some wacky things together? I have. It's definitely my favorite new ability, just because every time I'm about to do it, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what this is going to look like. Yeah, because you can combine pretty much anything to a weapon. I mean, mm -hmm. you can make a weapon a weapon. <laughs> you can you can attach a fish to a sword if you really wanted to. I don't. Yeah. Know. But you know, and it's funny to see what would happen. So I go. When they released in the trailer attaching a mushroom to your shield, I was like, what the heck? That seems... But then, oh, somebody hit it, and poof, a big cloud of spores, and you temporarily blinded your enemy. So there's there's a purpose to it. So what happens if I put the electric fish or something on that shield? What would happen if somebody hit it? I haven't done it yet, but I'm, hopefully it's a wooden shield. But they're probably going to get electrocuted. So you start thinking, okay, what can I do to, to, to expand that? And then it took me a little bit longer probably than, than it took you to, but I didn't realize you can confuse a weapon to another weapon. So I'm creating, I, I've had fun, the Staphylos arms. You know how when, you, when, when they drop a Staphylos arm, I attach that to another sword. So now I got this giant waving hand around <laughs> and it's a really strong weapon. It actually works really well. It looks silly as heck, but it works. It must um, look like one of those rubber hands you used to get out of a capsule machine. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you can combine things with shield. Um, don't go rock sur or go, don't don't go uh, shield surfing with a rock on your shield because you just fall right off. I've done that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, what I want to do, I haven't done it. Yet. I didn't think about it till I was out, away from level. But earlier on in the tutorial, there's like 
mine carts, uh, you know, carts. That, that's nothing new in Zelda. Yeah. I wonder if you can fuse that to a shield and then flip that and then use it like a skateboard. Oh my I want to try that. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot of like a lot of fun. What's that? A shield with a with, 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 with a mine cart on it would be fun. Uh, but anyways, you're just you, you, it's your imagination. Now monster parts. I used to always just take the monster parts. I sold them. I didn't mm-hmm. really do. I didn't seek them out. I mean, I'll gather them because I'm a completist. I'm I'm the guy that smashes every single pot, and grabs every single coin. So of course I've got to grab all the monster parts. But I've been fusing monster parts to the weapons, and that's been my biggest success with getting good strong weapons because there have been some levels like or i shouldn't say levels but areas where i'm exploring i'm like i'm not ready to be exploring here and i get one hit from that guy he's killing me and i might have six or seven hearts already but he's still killing me so all of a sudden i'm taking a weapon that was you know 11 toughness fuse on a certain monster part and boom 28 29 i'm like mm-hmm. okay <laughs> i'm still not ready to be i'm not leveled up to be in this level but that's my little cheat to get me where i need to go if i need to kill somebody otherwise i'm just fleeing and i'm running because <laughs> i'm not ready to be there um uh can you bring up the abilities again honey so the next one we have is recall recall, recall we all know about um it basically takes an item that had a course of action or or or, or, or movement and it can reverse the flow of time on that specific item so you have a wheel turning a certain way all right you hit that and oh now the wheel goes the other way yeah. What can you do with that information? What does that expose? Um, I, I I haven't found a whole lot of use for it outside of the obvious points where the game wants you to use it. Um, the biggest part when I get in the high rule is, you know, if you look around, you see a rock falling from the sky and landing. Oh, okay, I'm going to run to that rock, hit that, and climb on, and I'm going to ascend back up into the sky. Like yeah, he's using an example of that. We're doing that oh, right, right now. There, so yeah reversing reversing the course of a uh, movement on that item um but like i said i just i haven't found a lot of use for that as i have with fuse and ultra hand i'm sure there's more to it but i just that's 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 the one ability i need to explore a little bit more i think and i'm yeah. in the same boat uh yeah. recall is the one i use the least um it, it's come in handy for certain puzzles for sure what it did for me though was it answered one of the biggest questions i had before the game came out when we were just seeing trailers because the trailers were like, hey, look, you're in the sky and there's islands in the sky. And my biggest question was, it was so damn hard to climb a hill in Breath of the Wild. How am I going to get up there? That's... And recall is the answer. 99% of the time, that's how you get up to the sky. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Or <laughs> you could take the long way. I took the long way climbing up, <laughs> gliding from one rock to another, gliding to another rock. It took me like half an hour to get up to the sky, but I did it. Oh, my um, God. And then there's one more ability. Hunter, can you bring that up one more time? Ascend. This mm. is the answer to Rivoli's, to the lack of Rivoli's Gale. Yes. You get into a, into a, I mean, it doesn't work in the wide open, but if you're in a dungeon or if you're standing under a cliffside, you hit that and it, it's really, I mean, it sounds silly when you're just ta- saying it, but you basically fly up, fly through the object, fly through the wall, fly through the ceiling, fly through the, the cliff. And come out the other side on top. Again, it sounds silly, but in the game, all right, it made sense. I'm going for it. Uh, and that's been a lifesaver for exploring a lot of these caves, caverns, and you know, the, well, the, the castles and the dungeons. I've been able to get places where I wouldn't have been able to get uh, without without Revali scale. So yeah. that one's fun, and I'm I, I have a feeling that's going to be a constant throughout the whole game. Is you know, you use using a set or not a set? I'm sorry. I'm, no, you're right. Yeah, same. Yeah. I said, all right. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm so, so my mind's blown by these things. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're we're missing the old abilities from the old game. Um, I was actually really curious, like, how are you going to explain? Like, you know, if this game picks up where Breath of the Wild left off, Link was supercharged, had 20 hearts, had all the stamina, had all the abilities, and within the first 60 seconds, all right, okay, it explains why we don't have those. Oh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> my son was so excited when he first turned the game, he'd be like, Hey dad, look, I've got all these hearts, I'm doing really good. And he had the master sword to start. Hey, took I, I don't even think he ever found the master sword in in, in, in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so he was excited. Hey, I've finally got the master sword. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, again, a little bit of a spoiler there, but once you play the first tutorial, you'll 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 learn. You, know, you don't have the master sword the whole time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm I'm still I'm still I, I'm just getting spoilers. Or not I'm still waiting to get it back. I haven't gotten it back yet. Same, um, but I'm sure we will in, in due time. But 
Yeah. So it, 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 there's a little cut scene that explains what happens to Link. Actually, do you want you know like a side side talk? Do you want to talk about what happens to Link? How what happens to his arm? Everybody's yes. talking about the arm. Yeah. We can we can uh, do another little mini spoiler warning in case you have not started the game yet at all because this is literally the opening part of the game. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's talk about Link's hand. <laughs> so, what was it? it? Was it was Ganon was was that energy beam and Link held up his hand and basically all the darkness, all the gloom is what it's called in the game. Yeah, basically infused itself into his hand. I'm using the wrong hand here, but it infused <laughs> itself into his hand and. Link lost his arm. I mean, there's, there's, there's no way. You don't see it. It's not graphic like that. Mm -hmm. um, and he quickly gets a new one, but we find out. Well, he, he doesn't really find out. It doesn't really explain how he got this new arm. It said, we know which, what character it's from. I won't get into that. But I think that might be a little bit of a. Yeah, that, that was a big reveal. I don't want to give that away for anybody. Yeah. Oh. But <laughs> it's someone else's hand. Link, yeah. Link has someone else's body part on him. Um, yeah, just, it was really interesting. So again, that process drained him, basically almost killed him. Um, you know, I, I almost expected to be waking up in the Shrine of Resurrection yet again, Resurrection yet again, because it nearly killed him. And it, the, the game flat out says that Link almost died. So you're starting out this game in recovery mode. So you don't have the ability. He basically lost all his abilities. He lost his strength. And now he didn't lose his memory this time, because that's what that's it right. was in Breath of the Wild. So he has memory, but he doesn't have the strength from his abilities. And you're, you're getting that throughout the game. So I, I just thought that was a fun little thing. And I'm like, oh my God, he actually lost his arm. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that from Me uh, Metal Gear? Metal Gear? Uh, Maybe. Snake? Yeah. I've only played one of those. Um, <laughs> part two. Okay. But I know he's uh, um, like, he loses a lot. Metal Solid Snake goes through some stuff. He, he gets pretty mess messed up and banged up. I mean, uh, a little part of me thought we were going to be getting old man Link in this game. When they, when they first announced it, I thought it'd be like, you know, he's got the big beard. Like, we've never seen like a 60 year old Link where, you know, he's seen some stuff because he, believe me, he has, you know, this isn't even my arm, but no, we, we didn't get old man Link, but I think we're getting the beginning of it. <laughs> that would be amazing. I would be totally down for an old man Link. Um, and the, the idea that he doesn't have amnesia that you brought up, I think that's such a great little uh, it's a very subtle thing about this game that I keep getting reminded of every time I play it. And it just brings me so much joy uh, because we don't get direct sequels to Zelda games very, all that often. And, and nothing to the scale, right? No. Like even Majora's Mask, sure, he's off looking for Navi, but he's looking for Navi in a totally different part of the world. And then he looks for her for all of 45 seconds before yeah. he gets Yeah, it was a sequel in spirit. It was the same game engine, but it was a different game. So yeah, we... he's off doing something totally different. And now along comes Tears of the Kingdom. And it's a direct sequel so much so that you go to whatever village or whatever and you talk to somebody that you talk to in Breath of the Wild. And they're like, hey, Link, I haven't <laughs> seen you in a while. What's going on? Your hair's a little bit longer. What happened to your hand? Uh, mm -hmm. And it's it's just this fun little thing of like, I feel like progress is happening. I remember that lady and she was in trouble and I helped her out and she helped me out. And now look, she's doing well for herself. That's great. My All these little is, moments. I'm terrible with names. I don't remember. I'm like, <laughs> I, I know that face. I saw you in the other game, but what are you doing over here? You were in a different, like, actually, that's, that's something that, that kind of threw me off. We saw Robbie in a whole totally different village at the, at, when he first got to the yes. ground level. I was like, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be up north somewhere. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, because you're so used to the, you know, because I played Breath of the Wild so much. All right, well, that character was always in that one spot. That's just where he is. Now, all right, gloves are off. You're gonna find people in weird places. <laughs> yeah, because stuff has happened, and people like Robbie, people who are like in the thick of it, they're gonna go around and and try to help however they can. Um, I think one of the moments that stuck out to me in terms of meeting people, and it's not a it's not really spoiler at all. So I think I can bring it up is um, Hatano village in the, in the first game, there was an innkeeper and there was a guy who was in love with the innkeeper. And I think he wanted you to get a hundred crickets to give her or something like that from breath of the wild. Mm -hmm. If I'm remembering that right, he's like, Oh, go find out what she likes. And she's like, yeah, I like crickets, I guess. And then you have to go give him a hundred crickets so he can impress this girl. Um, I found that in, I spoke to her and both of those people are at the end and they seem like they've got a good thing going. 
So I'm like, this is this is so cool. I remember I helped them get together. Those crazy <laughs> kids are making something of them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Bolson. Bolson. I mean, remember yes. helping him build the whole village. Now he's president. He's running for all he's running for all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> We've created a monster with Bolson. <laughs> So yeah, it is interesting to see. So I mean, I'm not quite clear how much time has passed from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom because there's two points where time could have passed. Obviously, from the you know the end of Breath of the Wild to the very beginning of Tears of the Kingdom, because like we said before, Tears of the Kingdom starts off with Link and Zelda walking under the castle, exploring the caverns. Right. right? We don't quite know how much time has passed. There, the only thing that indicates the time has passed is Zelda has a haircut. So that's right. them showing you, okay. It's not, you know, it's not the same day. It's, it's been a little bit of time. But then, as we talked about before, Link gets seriously injured and he's hurt. And again, he doesn't wake up in the Shrine of Resurrection, but he does wake up in a, in a very similar fashion. Um, you know, he was almost killed and he finally comes back. But how much time passed there? Was he out for a day? Was he out for six weeks, six months? I don't think it's been years because I think other people would be like we thought you were dead. Where you know? What are you doing here? You, they don't quite have that. I mean, there's some people have weird reactions, but nobody's reacting quite that extreme. But what do you think? How much time has passed? I feel like, um, at the top of the game when you're with Zelda, I feel like that's maybe a month or two out from the end of Breath of the Wild. It feels right. Like okay, Ganon's been dead, or the Calamity's been dead for a month. Let's go see what we can fix. See what? Um, yeah, absolutely. And then when Link wakes up here after his arm gets busted. I feel like he's been out for almost a year just based off of his hair. Cause his, he's got like long Conan locks when he wakes up and he had his normal breath of the wild hair. Before but no that. beard. But no beard. That's true. Maybe they, <laughs> they can't grow facial hair. That, in that, roll. that must be it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Yeah. I, I think I, I, from beginning or sorry, from the end of breath of the wild to where we get into the game, I would say years a good, Good, good guess. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if we're going to find anything in the game that actually spells that out for us or not. We just leave it to our imagination. But you know, it hasn't been a hundred years because <laughs> no. in Breath of the Wild, he was in the Shrine of Resurrection for a hundred years. A lot happens there. Um, I was a little bit surprised because some of the, again, some of the trailers, and you can't base all your expectations off the trailers. But um, there was a cut scene where he was in Hyrule Castle, and Hyrule Castle was restored. So I thought, okay. I was expecting it to be five or six years between the two games because we saw that in the trailer. I thought, okay, they fixed Hyrule Castle because we know what a wreck, what a d dilapidated mess it was in the first game. So they spent time, they fixed up Hyrule Castle. So now we're going to get a proper Hyrule Castle. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but that's not quite the case in this in this instance. Um, I don't know the story of what we saw in those cutscenes, but once you start playing the game for half an hour, you can kind of figure out what where it's going to go uh, in that aspect. Um, like. And it ties into what happened with, with Zelda. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, man. I'm, I was I was ready to take notes and talk to talk to you today, Andrew, and say, okay, we gotta talk about this one, we're talk about this one. And I just couldn't put the game controller down to write those notes. I just kept on playing. So where do you want to go next? What do, what, what do you want to talk about? Well, I think that's the right way to do it though, Steve. I really do. Because this game is such a um sandbox make your own path kind of game that i feel like if we stuck to the rigidity of notes it goes against the heart and soul of tears of the kingdom right you know something, something to talk about your point there about you know being a direct sequel uh, my brother-in-law was uh saying oh he's, he thinks he's going to pick up a switch and he's going to pick up tears of the kingdom and i don't know if he was joking or not but i think he was serious and he's because like, he's seeing all this hype for tears of the kingdom i think he got him excited to play it and he's like can i do it i'm like oh. You can. You can just pick up Tears of the Kingdom and play it. It's like any game. You can pick it up mm -hmm. and play it. I didn't get into Castlevania until Castlevania 3. I didn't get into Legend of Zelda until Link to the Past. I, I didn't like the NES ones. That, that's a controversial opinion. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but can somebody pick up this game and start playing it? And I had to say to him, like, you know what, man? You can, but you're robbing yourself of half the story. You got to play Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And you got to play Breath of the Wild for six months. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you might beat it in the first month, but there's no way you did the whole thing. That that's why I hate the speed runner thing that's going on. Somebody beat T uh, Tears of the Kingdom in 94 minutes. I think it was. I'm like, you didn't. Oh my god! It. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like on day two. So, I guarantee you, know, you that person did not have a good time. Exactly. 
Exactly. They did not play the game. They may have beat the game, but they didn't play it. And think about how much of the game they missed by doing that. Sure. So that's why this game is meant to, you know, on your own time. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to point that out because it's it's a sequel. Absolutely, it's a sequel, and I really think this is one game where you got to play the first one first to get the benefit of the story. I think you're right, especially because, um, and I won't get into any details here because it's a dangerous territory, but there are things in the first game that um, you kind of hoped to see or hoped to encounter, and this game feels like it's saying, I know, I know what you want, and it's sprinkling some some things at you that uh, maybe your palate was still craving after Breath of the Wild. Um, one of the, the big things for me that I was excited for was I loved how Breath of the Wild redesigned all of the classic monsters. Uh, the Zelda monsters have always been fun. I love how this went back to the old NES uh, mentality of it. And by this, I mean Breath of the Wild, sorry. But Breath of the Wild went back to the old NES mentality where it's like, okay, a red monster is slightly weaker than a blue monster. And there's like this color to your thing. Mm-hmm. And then to top it all up, it gives us new versions of like the Moblins. And, uh, you know, here's what the bats look like now. Here's what the Lynels look like now. And the Lynels were, when I saw Lynels in Breath of the Wild, like my head exploded. I was so excited. So with Tears of the Kingdom, I kept thinking, okay, what are some classic Zelda monsters we did not see in Breath of the Wild? Mm -hmm. And what are they going to look like in this world? And early on, very early on in the game, I think in the tutorial, you meet one. Um, And I don't know, I don't know if it's too spoilery to say what it is. Um, But you'll know what I'm talking about because you did the tutorial, so you'll you'll see it there. But Mm -hmm. it's hanging onto a wall uh it's clinging to a wall and it uh it's very long and and worm like right you know what at first point i didn't recognize it i didn't and, same and and i was trying a whole bunch of different things like how do we how do we kill this thing and i thought it was i, I always thought it was a boss and then you you gotta you know the whole theme of the game is exploration explore different ways to attack this creature okay i'm hitting it with my sword not doing anything i gotta do something else now and it took me a while to figure it out. Probably longer than I want to admit. <laughs> Probably a couple of minutes into it before we, my son and I finally realized, okay, oh, we got to do that then. And now I'm killing those things like no problem at all. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the redesigns on a lot of these characters are great. Um, I can't remember the name of the, of, of the creature, but it's, I, know it's a, I know it's a new version of an uh, old three-headed dragon. Oh, Gleok. Gleok. Yeah. I, I uh, haven't encountered him yet. I have encountered two. And There's more than one? Spoiler, spoiler. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's something you will, when you're exploring Hyrule, you will bump into, vi- in, uh, it bump into these. And I didn't even attempt to go near it. <laughs> I watched it from afar. I think I, I took a picture of it, but that's it. Because I knew I'm, I'm not ready to face that. No, um, not with Herbosa's Fury. Anyway, I'm hoping I get that. <laughs> yeah. That was my boss killer in Breath of the Wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to see what Gleox, uh going to be all about, and I really hope there's more waiting for us. Um, well, then you know, this is not a spoiler again. If you saw the trailers, but you know, they take characters or or, or creatures that you saw in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> hey, here's this creature. Here's this creature. And now they're together. They're best friends. And now yeah. that, that Moblin is riding that rock talus. And uh, deal with it. Go deal with <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so again, with those, I, I, I've encountered one of those. And that was back very early. So I, I, I ran. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> yeah. That, without the bombs, suddenly those taluses are a whole other issue. So I don't... I, I just fought... Literally, I fought and beat my first talus before I turned off the game yeah. uh, to do the show. Um, and that was after a lot of trial and error. But hey, you know what? You never know what's going to be an enemy. I'm just going to I'm just going to leave that out there. Cause... Yes, <laughs> that was such a nice surprise mm-hmm. uh, having that happen. But oh, okay, I'm fighting this now, Ooh, right? Yeah. 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 I I also came across um, another familiar enemy um, that I feel like I also want to keep spoiler free, but 
I'm trying to remember where I saw it because it was very early. So you may have seen it too in the tutorial if that's where it was, but um, it came out of the gloom and there were a bunch of them kind of clustered together, whereas we're normally used to just one on its own. I'm not sure on that one. I'm not, hmm. Okay. Go back and play that again, because I'm not sure I saw that. I think I was, maybe I was in a cave. You know what? I may be wrong. I might. Sounds like a cave kind of thing, but yeah. yeah. Uh, and it popped out of some gloom. Um, but funny enough, one thing that I can't believe we didn't touch on yet is something that I didn't know if we were going to get again, Steve, and that's shrines. Mm, yes, yes. I thought we were done with shrines. Same. I I was wondering how are they going to explain like what happened to all those shrines from Breath of the Wild, and they still haven't quite, at least uh, I, don't, I don't even know if they will, but they haven't quite explained what happened to a lot. Actually, you know what? Let's do even bigger. The Divine Beasts from Breath of the Wild. Mm. I was wondering, what are they going to do with those in these in this game? I'm sure they're not going to be a big component, but right now, they're just not there. They're gone. Yeah. Um, same thing with a lot of um, a lot of a lot of things that you encounter in, in Breath of the Wild. They're just not there. And I'm trying to think. There was a. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it too much, but I did see a guardian show up in the village. Did you see that? Did you catch that? No. Yeah. Um, you're not encountering the Guardian like you would in Breath of the Wild, but just in the background, somebody flicks a power switch, and boom, it kind of was like they, they oh, wired it cool. into their system. And I was like, oh, that's a quite cute little nod. I like that. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, so there's no, sh the shrines that were in the old game are not there, but they've been replaced by a whole new shrine system. Spoiler. Um, I don't know. How do you find, I, I, I'm playing them and they don't feel as, small and, and confined as they were in breath of the wild again i know it's not dungeons everybody was raving about the ability or the option of having dungeons back and we might so far i haven't really explored what i would call a proper dungeon that i'm used to right. um but i do find these new expanded shrines are bigger and better uh, what, what's your thoughts on them i think you're right and it's hard to put a reason as to why maybe it's because of the really flexible nature of the new powers. So now the shrines feel like there's a few different ways you can go about doing it. Like I'm sure there's at least two shrines I can think of at the top of my head where I'm pretty sure I got through them in a way I wasn't meant to get through them. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure just the puzzle was too smart for me. So I was like, duh, what if I just put this here and it happened to work? <laughs> so <That's they're>, good. <laughs> yeah, so the, the flexibility of the shrines maybe makes them feel bigger um, and also there's, they've done an interesting thing with the shrines here to integrate them with all the new stuff they've made. And I won't spell this out in explicit detail, but if you are exploring underground, there is a correlation underground with what the shrines are doing up top. So if you are underneath where you know a shrine is on the overworld, you're going to find things there too. Yeah, that, that, that's a safe safe thing. To say. Yeah. Actually, we might even see that. That's what he's playing right now. <laughs> oh, is he underground again? Yeah, th are you underground? Oh, you're not? Oh, it just looks, looks like it. All right. Weather, weather. Weather. Not weather. nearly as much rain. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> right? Yeah, let's talk about the little things that we're noticing. So, mm -hmm. you know, not nearly as much rain. It's a little bit easier to climb things. And if he, rain, it's raining right now in this game right now. But I mm -hmm. find in Breath of the Wild and a lot of levels, the rain, the weather was predictable because it's like, okay, they want that wet, want, they want that hill to be challenged or that, that cliff to be challenging to climb. So, you know, they threw the rain in there on purpose. I'm finding of this one, the weather is more random. And maybe still by design, and I'm just so in awe and looking at everything else. I was like, "Oh yeah, it's raining. Oh cool." But I'm finding the the the, the weather to be a little little less predictable. This is the first rain. That's the first rain. He's he's been playing it for days, and that's the first time it's rained wow. on him. You know, yeah. I've had a lot of rain, so who knows? Um, one thing I'm enjoying is it's such a minor little detail, and it's not even a spoiler. I'm the guy that smashes every pot. I told you that before, right? Yeah. There's a lot of crates, and there's a lot of there's more pots in this game, but there's a lot of crates and, and things. And in Breath of the Wild, I would spend all my energy throwing bombs and blowing them up. And 
oh, I might grab a roasted apple. I might get an arrow, maybe. But a lot of them were empty. In this game, those, um, those things are full of, of things. I've gotten so many arrows. Because again, I'm smashing every single one. I'm using uh, the abilities to pick it up and just drop it and let it explode because I can't waste bombs anymore, right? So I'm right. Finding, finding different ways of, 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 of wrecking these things. But I'm finding there's a lot more items that are very useful to be in them. Um, so I don't know if you're the same, you know, same way where you're smashing every one, but if you're, if you're near one, smash it. It's, it's usually going to be worth your while. That's a good tip. I don't smash as many now because like you said, the bombs are in short supply. Mm -hmm. So I've been just kind of like, if I feel like I'm running low on, I always like to have at least a hundred arrows, anything under triple digits. And I feel like, Oh no, I'm wasting them. <laughs> so if I ever like venture down into the scary areas of uh, 99 arrows, I, I start to smash crates to see what I can come up with. Um, but I haven't done it as often. Uh, so I'll definitely try that some more. Yeah. The rain, the weather has been much more forgiving for me. I've been able to climb without hassle. I've only only certain areas like around waterfalls have I been climbing and it's like, no, it's too wet. You're going to slip. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Other than that, I haven't had the problem. And I noticed they added a new frog. Uh, I forget what it's called, but there's a new frog that if you make an elixir out of this frog, it keeps you sticky and lets you climb even when you're wet. I did not know that. I've killed many of those things, but Whoa. I did not know. But I'm, you know, I'm terrible with elixirs. I don't make elixirs too much. So. <laughs> That's that's that that's a, an area I need to improve on. So thanks for the tip. No problem. That's the I don't really make them either. Um, I think I made like ten the whole time in Breath of the Wild. But when I saw that frog, when I picked it up and it said what it can do, I was like, this frog and I we're gonna be best friends. <laughs> mm. The cooking system pretty well. It, it's it's still the same cooking system, but I don't know. I've only had one instance where I, I was trying something new and came up with dubious food. So mm. you know everything has its purpose. Um, and you know what? We're speaking of abilities, you know, the elixirs and you know concoctions that you you make for food, they give you different abilities too. Like to, you know, you still have your stealth, you still have your 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 strength upgrade or you know, defense or you know, cold protection. But there's also things like you can glow. It you 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 can have ten minutes of glowing, which sounds silly, but when you're down in the dark dungeon or in in the caverns and you don't want to use any of your um light seeds i'm just gonna drink it i'm gonna glow and i can see where i'm going yeah. i never thought about that as a as a feature and there's there's a couple different um uh things things, things you can do with that I don't, again i don't want to spoil things i don't want to get into too much there but they've expanded on the food system now so now you got to think even more what what will happen if i drink this have you had a have you seen a bear yet i have not seen a bear that's a great point no bears i've just seen goats and wolves and not nearly as many wolves as breath of the wild have either let's let's go back on that um bears i found a bear and i was like i was showing off to my kids i'm like hey guys i'm gonna go ride a bear because you know, that was the funnest thing to do for a while uh and i snuck up on it snuck up on it but i wasn't i wasn't stealthy enough and it turned around and it saw me it didn't attack me so i'm like okay well i can't ride it so of course i gotta kill it because i want the meat right i must have fired 30 arrows into this thing it didn't die <laughs> And my, my kids are like, are bears impervious to pain in this game now? I'm like, I'm, again, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't encounter too many bears in Breath of the Wild. I know I did, but because they weren't in the game too often, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they weren't prevalent all over Hyrule. But I'm pretty sure I could kill one and drop one with a few <laughs> arrows and a sword. In this one, it, maybe it was a glitch or something, but I, I, I tell you, I, I, I fired a lot of arrows and the thing, I mean, it just eventually it ran off and I ran out of stamina. I couldn't keep up to it. So I said, like, all right, bear, you live. Wow. Yeah. You found a mega bear. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the the um the bears, the wolves, they don't they're still in packs, but not quite like before. Um they definitely have a different hunt hunting pattern. Is that there's a little bit less predictable. Mm -hmm. But I'm you know, in the early stages of Breath of the Wild, I got tossed around by the wolves quite quite a bit. Um until I kind of figured out how to how to get them. This one, they're they're pretty easy. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I feel like somebody down the line must have complained. Like there were way too many wolf attacks in Breath of the Wild. Like every ten feet, I'm getting you know circled by wolves. So I feel like they corrected on that, and they were just like, okay, they there's like seventy percent less wolves now than there used to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Actually, no, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, have we seen any new, I haven't seen any new animals yet. Have you? I don't think I have. Um, I've been taking mad pictures because I'm one of those like insane people who's trying to fill out my, my um, Hyrule compendium there. So I've been taking mm -hmm. pictures of every animal I see and I can't remember seeing anything that stood out that was shocking or new. There was a white goat. Uh, I don't remember if the goats were colored back in the first one, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that means we're getting different colored goats. So maybe that's about it. <laughs> Have you befriended any dogs yet? No, I haven't befriended any animals. I, I went to the, um, I, I got a horse for somebody just because they wanted one. Yeah. Um, but when I went to the stable and talked to the stable person, I just found out that they, they can bring back your horses from your save file from Breath of the Wild. So I was like, oh, cool. But I didn't ride them because I prefer walking. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, cool. My shadow fax is there if I ever need them. Great. There and then I go. just ran off and jumped into a pool. I fed one of the dogs at a stable three different meat. And because, you know, normally once you befriend a dog and you feed it, it's going to go show you something. Uh -huh. This one didn't. had nothing to show me. Just kept begging uh -huh. for more food. And I find... The food, again, maybe it's just because we're still in the beginning level of the stages of the game. I'm pretty, you know, I don't have a lot of food to spare. <laughs> you know, Same. like yeah. I had I had to devote an hour just to, you know, okay, I, I've got nothing in my reserves here. I need an hour to go hunting and go see, you know, foraging through the forest, grabbing as much as I could because I know I'm going to need it later on. So again, me, me, I don't know if that's different or not for Breath of the Wild or it's just the way I'm playing it, but. Yeah, I've been running out of food a lot, and I have to devote myself to go and, okay, I need to go find something. No. And you're not going to find anything up in the sky, or you're not going to find much. You're not going to find much down in the caverns. you got to do it on the main level of Hyrule. No, there's definitely nothing edible, nothing that you want to eat down in those caverns. And no. you're right. Maybe it's the lack of wolf attacks in this one, but I also, I in Breath of the Wild, I'm swimming in meat all the time. I can have a barbecue at any given point, whereas in Tears of the Kingdom, I have like five pieces of meat and I got to be really conservative with how and where I cook them. Mm -hmm. I find my kids, I mean, this is just something. My kids, they're, okay, I got a meat. All right, I got five pieces of meat. Let's cook them all together. I'm like, no, you're at the beginning levels of the game. You don't need that many hearts. You know, <laughs> yeah. just cook small. Just cook something for two or three hearts, not 10, 15 hearts, because you don't have that many hearts. Mm -hmm. So, again, you, you play the game differently at the beginning than you do it at the end, once you kind of learn the ins and outs and get overpowered. But Yeah. Yeah. And I, I discovered some fun new recipes of things that weren't in the first game that I'm like, I've been cooking and they don't even give you many hearts, but I'm just like, I can't believe I got to make a blank in Zelda. So mm. I, I just, I've been spamming that as often as I can, but ingredients are also more expensive. So I feel like Hyrule is scarily imitating real life. Did Galen <laughs> Weston take over the, uh, the shop markets in Kakariko because it's like, I want to buy one piece of like wheat and it's going to cost me 18 rupees. And I'm like, what happened here? Mm -hmm. So no, stick recession. To, stick to apples. They're free. They're cheap. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're plentiful. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You can go on about cooking. That's that's, there's a lot going on in that. Um, even just things like golden apples. Do you remember, have you found any golden apples? Uh, one. I'm a, I've got three. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I don't know. With Breath of, I, when I started Breath of the Wild, I was probably about six months behind the, the launch. Of the, uh, so if I wanted to go Google something, hey, what do I do with such and such? Yeah. That information's there. Right now, there's not a whole lot out there. And I'm, I'm challenging myself not to look anything up. I want to play it straight through on my own. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm curious what you can do with little things like the golden apple. So yeah, I wonder. I don't want to, I'm scared to waste it. Right yeah. <laughs> now. I'm assuming it's going to like whatever you make will be called like this is a golden simmered fruit platter and maybe it gives you like five more hearts than normal or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, once I picked that up, I'm like, this is staying with me forever. <laughs> um, have you encountered anything where you feel like if this game was six months old, you would have looked it up right away? Like anything like just stump you? Honestly, completely? no. Well, yeah. Okay. One. There's one shrine I can't figure out. And I did something, I kind of got into it in a way I don't think I was supposed to. And then I got stuck because I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on here. What's that symbol? Why is that symbol there? I didn't I didn't recognize it, so I had no idea what it was. Um, so I think I, so I eventually left. It's the only uh, shrine I haven't completed that I've gone into. And 
in retrospect, I think I know what to do now. So now I just got to go find it. I don't even remember what the name of it was, but that, 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 that's it for now. That's the only thing I want to, you know, I, I don't think looking up recipes is, you know, cheating, you know, that, no. that, that, that's just, that's just knowledge, you know? Um, but yeah, as far as like any kind of a walkthrough or anything like that, no, I'm, I'm avoiding that at all costs right now. But I am, but I am helping the kids with it. So is that yeah. cheating there? I don't know. You're their walkthrough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting, you know. Okay, how does he do things? How is he going to cross that river? That's totally different than how I cross the river. They both were, you know, they're both completely valid and and and, and awesome ways of doing it. So it's yeah. it's fun. It's fun to see uh see how to cross the river, so to speak. Every time um, uh, th there's a mini game that'll pop up a lot in the game where. Somebody's trying to put up a sign and you got to help them put up a sign. And every time I complete one of those, I always feel like I did it the wrong way. <laughs> like I wasn't supposed to do it this way, uh, but somehow it worked. You know what? I didn't even clue in on that. I just, I talked to the guy, I said, okay, yeah, good luck with that. And I kept on going. Ooh. I didn't realize there was a game attached to that. Help him out. He's, he's uh, everywhere. I've, I, yeah. I've, I've seen him like five, five different places now. Now yeah. I just, I just kind of shrugged him off. Guess I gotta go back. Yeah, right. he gives you good stuff. He doesn't give you like amazing things, but he'll give you money, and I think he gives you food. Okay. Um, so he'll always toss something your way. I I have come to one part that has me like with my back to a wall. I don't know how to proceed, um, and I I'm avoiding looking anything up too because like he's, I, I just want to purely make my way through it. But I don't know. Maybe you've come across this, and maybe you found a smart way around it. But there's a gentleman in Kakariko village who keeps uh, prohibiting me from going to a certain part of Kakariko village. Uh, and I don't know how to get him out of my way. To be uh, honest, I haven't hit Kakariko village yet. Okay. It All was right. on, it was on my path of things to do. And then it's got distracted by too many things. Distractions. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Um, you know, okay. So is there anything in the game? Cause I'm, there's, you know, how many hours have we put into this game already? And we're still at the beginning stages of it. There's still yeah. a lot of different directions. Is there anything you want to happen or anything you're looking forward to, to you know, the ability to, 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 to do? I would love, um, I think the two biggest things right now for me is I would love a traditional Zelda dungeon. I know I'm not in the minority at all. I think we would all like that. Um, and I would also love to see what else is waiting for me down in the depths. I'd love to make some kind of crazy big discovery because so far I have made, I found one huge thing down there that was a really pleasant surprise. Um, and when a certain thing happened in there, I was like, oh my God, what a great, you know, <laughs> I can't even say the word, but what I'm, I'm very excited to see that down here. Um, so I am hoping for something down there because I feel like when I found that it's something totally extra that is not necessary, maybe, but I want to find something down there that's big and exciting and part of the story because the story, unlike other Zelda games where you can kind of go through the motions and be like, I got to do five things and then I can go rescue Zelda. Yeah. This story is so intriguing and I love all the little bits and pieces that we add to it. So mm -hmm. I want to encounter something that's important to the story and find out more answers to all the questions I have. You know, to touch on your point, you know, again, we're talking about the lack of dungeons and it's controversial. Mm -hmm. um, I think they are in there. I think we will hit something. Um, there's a level or, or I, don't, I don't know what to, what, to, what to call it, but I know you and I have both done it up in the sky. Yes. Uh, and it was very much like exploring a divine beast. It, you know, it's not quite a dungeon but i found it much better laid out than the divine beast that's one of my complaints about breath of the wild you know there were no dungeons but you had the divine beast but i found the 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 visual stylings of the divine beast to be hard on my eyes and you lost a lot of details and i didn't enjoy playing the divine inside the divine beast very much um this one much more i guess organic it just it's visually it looked better and to me it played better it wasn't as frustrating. Uh, I'm going to say frustrating. I mean, I don't mean just because I can't do it. I just mean like, uh, this, this level's annoying me. This one, I li I really liked it. And I'm hoping that the rest of the level, or, or I, I don't even I get a challenge. Like, what do you call it? But 
I'm hoping they're going to be like that. And one other thing I did notice on the map, if you pay attention to your maps, one of the labyrinths, because I, I I haven't unlocked the whole Hyrule map. I haven't even come close. Yeah, me neither. I've on, you know, on a map, I haven't gone to it, but I saw a labyrinth. But I also noticed on the sky map, there was a labyrinth up there in the exact same spot. Ooh. That I found interesting. So I, I'm looking forward to exploring that. And my problem, I hate the snow levels. I always, in Breath of the Wild, it's because there's so much in there. There's not, you know, I like the forest where it's full of creatures, full of rocks to flip, lots of Lots of stuff in the snow levels, not so much. And um, there's more snow levels in this one. And I kind of quickly got out of there. I was like, I don't want to, I don't feel like exploring these ones yet, but I will make my way back to that labyrinth and, and get to the bottom of what's going on there because I find it interesting. But the same design was up in the sky. That's so cool. Yeah, I haven't seen a labyrinth. I think I saw one off in the distance, but I haven't even seen one on my map. Um, and this, you're, I'm in the same boat where I'm trying to avoid the colder regions. Because that damn snow quill tunic is like 800 rupees now. And I'm not made of rupees anymore. Yeah, I can't like, keep it, up with inflation in this game. It's crazy. <laughs> so once I get to a comfortable amount where I have a nice buffer and I can go buy that thing, then I'll start hitting the colder regions. But right now I'm just, I'm kind of staying safe and comfy in Zora's domain as we speak, just because it's neutral temperature. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm I'm scared to see how much it's going to cost me to buy that desert outfit. I always go to the desert last in Zelda games because it's my favorite area. So mm -hmm. I always just save that for the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know you've unlocked an ability that I haven't. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to most. Because I'm trying to figure because I have no idea what it is, mm -hmm. and I'm very curious what that's going to be and, and and how it's going to change things. So again, I don't know where I'm going to find it or where I'm going to encounter it, but that's what I'm looking forward to most right now in my, in, in my playthrough. It's, it's just... I, I think you're better off finding it a little later. Like oh. I said, I, I feel like I found it earlier than I was supposed to um, because there is, uh, first of all, there's a fight that you do roughly around the same place that you find this ability. And I tried that fight twice and I'm like, nope, I'm out of my league. This is, I'm getting out of here. Um, and the ability itself, without making anything too uh, explicit, it, it feels like if you get it later in the game, it's handier. Okay. So. Ah, you got, it's a, you're speaking in riddles and I, <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I must find this. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, overall, you know, what's your, what's your thoughts? Is it is it the game we all expected? It's, personally, it's what, I mean, granted, my big thing was I, I hope there's dungeons, classic dungeons, and I haven't really seen a classic dungeon yet. But other than that, it's exceeding all of my hopes and expectations. It is as beautiful as I wanted it to be and more. It is as vast as I hoped it would be and more. Um, the fact that I encountered a new version of an old monster so early on just made me so giddy because I'm now I'm just like, bring me Gleok, bring me all the other ones that I don't know about yet. I hope I see my girl Goma, the spider, somewhere because she's like one of my favorite Zelda monsters. So it's giving me so far all the stuff that I've wanted. And I love the fact that even though I'm about 25 hours in, I've scratched barely the surface. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, yeah. Like I said, I am you know, from, from the trailers. I had preconceived notions and they haven't quite been there, but I'm not complaining about that. Um, yeah, it's. It, it, I thought that the build, ability to build things was really going to like. I mean, it's a huge part of the game, but I thought it was going to be an even bigger part of the game. So I'm kind of relieved that it's not all about that. Yes. You know, in a lot of cases, you don't have to be. Like, it's there, and you can do it, and it might save you some time. It might you know, you know, but you don't have to do it. Um, my son, though, my youngest son, who's the one playing right now. He was not the world's biggest Zelda fan. I think I've talked about that before. He didn't you know, love Zelda. He played Breath of the Wild, but you know, he didn't even get to the Master Sword. It just, just wasn't his thing. He's loving this game because he's more of a Minecraft person. So for him, mm -hmm. the ability to build things and create things and even just, I'm going to build something and turn it on and see what the heck happens. You know, <laughs> It doesn't matter if it has a purpose or not. Let's see what happens. Uh, and he's loving that aspect of the game. And it's really, you know, as, as, as a parent, it's really fun to see him trying to decide how can, what can I build to accomplish that? 
And again, we're totally different. I like, wow, I didn't build that at all. I, <laughs> I did something completely different. And again, they're both valid. They're both great. So I'm, that's what I've been most happy with with this game is th that, that new ability has just been a game changer. I don't know if it's enough to bring in new fans. You know, you and I both went into this huge Zelda fans, right? You know, mm -hmm. I've got the merch to prove it here. I'm, I, I'm all in. I don't know if it's going to bring in, you know, the ability to build stuff is going to bring in a brand new fan. Like I said, my son knew about it because he saw me playing it so much. He tried it, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's ability. I mean, hopefully all this hype will get people interested, right? But just like my brother-in-law, I'm like, all right, well, hey, go play Breath of the Wild first. You're not ready for this. <laughs> yeah. I told my best friend the same thing. He's never played a Zelda in his life. And he asked me, he goes like, uh, because you sound so excited. He said, is this worth me buying a Switch to play? I told him the same thing you told your brother-in-law. I was like, this is so much a sequel that it, I feel like if you don't play Breath of the Wild first, you are not getting the full experience here. Yeah. Okay. And I said, Zelda's not normally like that, but this just happened to be like that. Um, but you mentioned the hype, and this is the first time I've gotten a Zelda game when it was brand new since Majora's Mask. Oh, wow. um, and that wasn't even a buy. I rented it day one from Blockbuster. But it's the first time I've played a game brand new in the Zelda franchise since Majora's Mask. And I have never been part of that collective opening hype because of that. So I love just jumping on Twitter and seeing some random lady in Kentucky who's like, oh my God, I just spent 12 hours finding shrines. I'm having so much fun. And it's like that communal experience of everybody's running through Hyrule right now as we speak and finding things we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, I am glad that we got to have this chance to do our first impressions of the game. How great is it that you can still call it first impressions after like almost two dozen hours? <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's um, the beauty of it. And just the ability, you know, hey, hey, did you find this thing yet? No, did you find this thing? Like that, that keeps it fresh for 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 for, for the community, for, and and that's great. That's good, you know. We're I, I have a feeling, Andrew. We're going to be doing this six months from now. We're still going to be talking about this game. I think it? So. Yeah, I beat it, but you know, I still got all those other side quests to do. And I'm not a, like in any other game. I'm not big on the side quests. You know, mm -hmm. I got to have a reason to do it. In this, okay, no, I'm I'm enjoying the challenge. I mean, I'll I'm going to lay it out here, folks. I never found all the Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild. I didn't find them all. Couldn't. I wore that dang Korok mask <laughs> all through the game, <laughs> waiting to get, but I, I didn't find all the seeds. And that's still, that, that haunts me to this day. So I'm hoping I can do that with this one. There you go. There's a Korok uh, mask and Animal Crossing we could find. Ooh. I didn't even think to look at Animal Crossing, but it's there. <laughs> um, so, I, so I'm looking forward to, uh, I, I'm looking forward to doing this with you in, in six months time again, because I think we're going to have the same level of excitement. And I'm hopefully other people do too. You know, like, like, like I think that's the beautiful thing about this game is, the ability is there. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be so many different takes on it. I mean, and there's so much packed in this game. Like, you brought up Korok Seeds, and I didn't even think of it through the video until now. But just like Shrines, that was another thing where I'm like, are we getting Koroks again? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And we're getting Koroks again. In Breath of the Wild, I got to a point where I only had 11 seeds left to find. Steve, oh. Only 11, and I couldn't find them. Oh. And it was horrible. So now with these Koroks... I feel like these ones are a little bit easier to maintain in terms of their puzzles. So we'll see. Maybe I can get my hands on a little bit more, but finding them is the issue. But you're right. There's so much to unpack and discover. And every little thing you do is progress for Link, which yeah. is fantastic. It's game design at its finest. Awesome. Uh, He's so, going to be old man Link by the time we're done playing this game. Oh, he better be. <laughs> or, or maybe that's part three. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so, Steve, where can the good people find you if they want to chat with you about Zelda or whatever? Are you on the social media? Please meets? chat with me. I want to talk to people about Zelda. I love it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Casual Pop Fan, where you know I'll, I'll talk about a lot of things uh, pop culture. You know, but yeah, I always say you know I know a little. I know a lot about a little, but a little about a lot. But <laughs> when it comes to Zelda, I, I I'm gonna toot my own horn here. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm I'm, I'm more than casual about Zelda. So. Uh, yeah, hit me up on Twitter. Let's let's chat. I'm looking forward to it. Well, looking behind you, you found the Triforce, so clearly you know your way around Hyrule. Hey. So, 
Hey, you got the master sword back there somewhere too. Come on. Oh, man. nice. I'm all, I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and, and YouTube at Andrew Fantasia. Um, you can also find me on Amazon.com where you can buy my fantasy books right now. My self-published books, We Were Wizards. And if you're a Zelda fan, you're probably a fantasy fan or you have one in your life at least. And this is just good old fashioned magic. And there's lots of wizards and lots of crazy things happen. And there's already a sequel that came out too. So it's it's right there right now. And you can get an ebook if that's what you prefer. And I know that's what James prefers. So there you go. Excellent. <laughs> But until next time on Digital Charcuterie, I hope everybody has fun playing Tears of the Kingdom. And if you haven't picked it up yet, do yourself a favor. Pick it up. Keep uh, exploring, people. Keep yeah. exploring. That's all I can tell you. I can't <laughs> wait to hear people's stories uh, once all is said and done. Steve, thanks so much, man. Thank thanks you for joining you. us. And right. uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, may you be the master of your own Hyrule. <laughs>